State fans shook up Southern California with a long awaited outburst of good vibrations. Colorado State hadn't been to a bowl game in 42 years, so it was no big surprise when Ram Pride exploded. But the fuse was lit two years ago. Please welcome and get a hand. Okay. Good. I like both of them. <laughs> In 1989, Earl Bruce came to Colorado State with hopes of turning around a program that had been dormant for years. The awakening of the football program was instantaneous. After a 1-11 record in 1987 and a 1-10 record in 1988, the Rams went 5-5-1 five, five and one in their first season under Earl Bruce. In 1990, they aimed even higher. The first goal that they put up on the board when we were making our goals at the beginning of the season was to go to a bowl game. The 1990 season got underway with a thrilling come from behind victory at Air Force. It was only a hint of the great things to come. Verdugo takes the snap, drops back to pass. He throws in the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Greg Freeman. We started this year in Colorado Springs. And after that game, and I remember many of us said, we're on our way. We're on our way to something very special for this institution. The arch rival Wyoming Cowboys came into Hughes Stadium with a perfect 9-0 record and ranked 18th in the nation. But the Ram defense believed in themselves and not the polls. They had an answer for every Cowboy challenge. Carranza, back to pass, good protection, steps up, goes intercepted by the Rams at the 35-yard line, Tippecanic to the 20, cuts it back, Tippecanic to the 10, 5, touchdown! The biggest play of the year, the biggest play of the year. The bronze boot was back in Fort Collins. Under the weight of a new spirit, the town began to tremble with good vibrations. tough enough. To win at Hawaii is next to impossible, but this team always seemed to find a way to win. Second and goal. Jimenez back. They throw the screen pass. It's caught by Copeland. Inside. Dives. Touchdown! The Rams lead at 28-27 with 28 seconds left. In yet another exciting late rally, the 1990 Rams finished with an 8-4 regular season record, second place in the Western Athletic Conference, an undefeated home season, and an invitation to the Freedom Bowl in Anaheim, California. When you can win in Hawaii, you can win anywhere, under any condition. Thumb knows winning. After all, he played in the last First bowl game for Colorado State. It's been a long wait, but this determination to return to a bowl game has been simmering all season long. It was great when they said we were going to the Freedom Bowl. And everybody celebrated, and everybody really liked it, and things were in a turmoil, and we still are saying we're going there. But you know what today meant? We're not only going there, we're going there to win. You hear me? Sunny Southern California, an ideal setting for Freedom Bowl 7, hitting the Rams of Colorado State University against the University of Oregon Ducks. Oh, 
It's Colorado State, their first bowl appearance since back in 1948 versus the Ducks of Oregon on an unseasonably cool evening right here in Southern California. Well, a very pleasant good evening to you, everybody. I'm Phil Stone, along with Craig James. I'll tell you one thing about the Rams of Colorado State. They're not used to these holiday parties, Craig, and they're so excited about all this, they don't even know who's going to quarterback yet. Let's go! And Tony Alford deep, along with Billy Gonzalez. And there's the kick. It comes to Alford. He's underneath it at the one-yard line on the right side, which is the near side of the field. Tony gets it across the 20, spins off one tackle, gets it up to the 25-yard line. And the Rams will have it there, first and 10. Backs are split. Third and four. Verdugo straight back to pass. He's got good protection. Throws complete to the tight end. It is caught by Linder down to the 30-yard line for a first down. Third and five, and Verdugo drops. Here comes the linebacker blitz. They pick it up. There's the throw complete to Primus at the 18-yard line and out of bounds. At the 11, flags are down. Primus was brought down by the face mask. That will move it down close to the five-yard line. All right, fourth and goal. Macronado, Yurt, and Tony Alford, and they run the option. Jimmy Neff keeps it. He's over for a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Going to a bowl game is more than just playing football. Ladies and gentlemen, Rotarians, please join me in a rousing welcome for the 11th winningest coach in college football, Earl Bruce. Earl, bring you up. As the anticipation builds, Oregon tries to get the upper hand early on. Earl, playing uh, Pac-10 opponents, uh, certainly nothing new for you as a head football coach. What have you told your Rams about the Oregon Ducks? Very little. <laughs> We're trying to keep that a secret until Saturday night. Uh, basically, that they're strong, they're physical, they're tough. They've got a great quarterback that throws the football. So we got to overcome all that. And I'm trying to tell our team before we came down here how we're going to try to do that. I'm not going to tell you who. Ladies and gentlemen, over it. A day at Disneyland. And you thought that win over Wyoming was thrilling. The Colorado State University marching band gets in on the act and thrills the crowds on Main Street that night at Disneyland. That's really like speaking to coach who says my line is 30 pounds light. <laughs> Kickoff is less than 24 hours away. Some of Colorado's most influential figures huddle to formulate the game plan. Players from the Raisin Bowl of 1949 also huddle to reminisce and offer some of their gridiron wisdom. You didn't even know Dive Wright. I forgot about it. the kick, a high spiral, Brown underneath it, at the 32, fumbles the football, Rams have it at the 33. The ball hit off the shoulder pads of Brown, and the Rams recover it at the 33-yard line, and Adolph Renaud on top of it. And Jimenez runs the option, fakes, there's the pitch to Copeland, running to the right side, Brian trying to turn the corner, does at the 20, 15, cuts it back, down to the 10. Granado, Yurt, and Alford in the Roba. Third and goal. They hand it to Alford. Right side. Dive. Touchdown. <laughs> on game day, the madness started early with the basketball team taking on Cal State Fullerton. Faithful reassembled at Anaheim Stadium to fire up. Listen, I just want you to know that it is just a 
a joy to see 8,000 of you here. Give yourself a hand. All right. Moon is out. The blimp is up. We've got a 17-14 game. What else could you ask for? Uh, if you're old Bruce, you could ask for about three more points to at least tie this thing up. But it's a Super Bowl game. I think he has to be pleased with the first half. In the third quarter, the Ram defense began to show its character. State takes the lead on a Mike Brown field goal. We think is good. It was back and forth all night. First and ten from the 44. Musgrave is going long. There's McClellan, and the Ducks are back in front. First and ten now at the Rams 26-yard line. Burwell loses the football and is picked up by Colorado State. Eric Tippincott knocked it loose and picked it out of midair. Many said it was the most exciting bowl game of the holiday season. Here's Jimenez, looking to the near side, it is cut, it is cut, Greg Primus is going to go. Start running and they start coming up, coming up. And we knew their free safety, he, he would react to the run. So we just we figured we're just gonna run, we run a few plays and then see if we get one deep on it and it works. Just joined us, oh man, have you missed a good one. The Rams out in front of Oregon, 26 to 25. If you want to see this place rocket, look at the second deck at Anaheim Stadium. That is not trick photography. George Lucas has nothing to do with this telecast. Oh, gee, and, and it's not an earthquake either. That's feet stomping, people clapping. That is Todd Yurt. Look out, he could go. running I was like I just I gotta make a move on somebody there you know normally it's fullbacks just run straight ahead and I thought well heck might as well now or never make a little cutback and uh, fortunately it worked I don't think anybody was expecting me to cut back but. Oregon just a touchdown behind with 4.59 to play more than enough time for Bill Musgrave and company to go to work Good, you know? This is great. I'll tell you what, I, I can't even explain this. 
10 years from now, you're gonna go back and talk to all your friends, and they're gonna talk about this game and this victory, and it's just incredible that we came this far and won the game, too. After I scored that touchdown, the, the upper level, that, that B level, was just shit. You guys see that? that, was, that was incredible. I thought, I was thinking, wow, what if that would have break or something? I was like, they were going crazy playing that song. That's incredible. I've never seen that before out of any fans anywhere. You know, we played in Tennessee, had everybody screaming, but jumping and making the whole level sway, that was just incredible. I thought, that, that's a, the apex of emotion right there for us. <laughs> What we are seeing is the beginning of a, a new spirit, a new Colorado State University. Colorado State's 1990 football squad, champions of Freedom Bowl 7, a 9-4 and four record on the season, one of the most successful seasons in school history. This team etched a place in the hearts of Ram followers for many years to come. This is a season we won't soon forget. us in great stead and really measure what our football team has done. And there are three little words that say, and then some. Because they worked hard, and then some. They played hard, and then some. They conditioned hard, and then some. <laughs> 